Hey everybody, um, I wanted to make this video um, especially to Mel, Mel's basket case. Um, it will in reply to her video because um, she was making a video about how she was thinking about going back to work and currently she's on SSDI um, because she has schizophrenia. And I wanted to say that actually I have a suggestion. Of course you don't have to listen to it, but um, the thing is, when you're on SSDI, you can also work part-time, and if you make under a certain amount of money, um, I think it's under, oh, I can't remember the exact number, you can get it off the SSDI website, but if you make under that amount of money, they don't count it in your gainfully employed um nine months of cons of non-consecutive work so like you were saying um, like if you start to make money then they count you as gainfully employed and you ha get on probation for a certain amount of time well if you make under a certain amount of money then they won't count your um, your employment as like gainful or whatever so you can still make the money, I think it's probably under, maybe it's like five or six hundred dollars a month. And then, um, plus you'll still get your SSDI, which is really good because I don't know if you use the medical benefits, um, but, um, like if you get Medicare and stuff, that's really good. So you can keep that. You can keep getting the two or three hundred dollars a month that you get from SSDI and you can keep the money from your job so working part-time and also I think it would be beneficial for you because you might get really stressed out if you have to work like 40 hours a week or more so if you worked like less and maybe you weren't as stressed out but maybe you would do you know maybe it would be helpful for you to get out and do a job, you know, makes you feel better about yourself or something like that. But if you work part time, you could keep the money, you could keep the money from SSDI, you could keep the benefits from SSDI, unless they, you know, had a, a uh, evaluation and determine you were not disabled, but I don't think they would do that. So, um,. Yeah, that would be my suggestion to you and anyone else out there who's on SSDI because it's a good way to work. You feel good about yourself, but you don't get so stressed out that um, you have a relapse or something like that. Or um, you have, you know, more, you get really too worked up about work and you can't handle it and then you have another problem because they don't really want that to happen so um, check on the on the website I think it's socialsecurity.gov or I don't remember <laughs> but they will tell you the or you can even call this social security office and they will tell you the limits the like monetary amount that you can make up to without them counting it as gainfully employed so um, yeah I think that would be a really good way to go um, I know that I well actually I do that because I work part-time and I go to school and I also get SSDI which is really good because I need the um, health benefits um, so I can get my medication and my health care and stuff like that. Without it, I would be like crazy and stuff. And um, that way I don't get too stressed out about work either. And then I don't have, re like, that's why, part of the reason why I haven't had a relapse in like almost seven years now. Because um, I haven't, you know, been too stressed out. And also... Um, like, I still have sleep issues. Like, I know you're up some, Mel, you're up sometimes for 24 hours at a time or something. And I also have sleep issues where I can't, 
or I sleep too much or whatever, so it's hard for me to keep a full-time job. But I'm able to work part-time, so, you know, that's good, and I'm... Like feel good about myself for working part time at least, and I'm going to school, so I feel good about that. And and then I get the benefits of the SSDI plus the medical benefits. So um, yeah, I would encourage you to. I mean, I would really encourage you to work part time to start out with. If you can, you know, because you'll still be making money, but, you know, maybe ease back into it, especially if you're not used to working. It is a big stressor, and especially for someone who has mental health issues, it can be, like, really stressful. So, um, even more so than for, you know, normal people, whatever that is. But, um, yeah, I guess that's my bit of advice, and... Um, oh, the other thing I was going to mention, too, was that if you really wanted to, you could um, go back to college, or, or I don't know if you've been to college, but if you could go to college and they could give you financial aid to go to college and you'd get some money to live on with that, too, I imagine, and probably you could get grants and scholarships and stuff like that, um, but I don't know if you want to do that. But that might be another route, too. But, um... And then that would, like... You know, give you self-confidence and job training and stuff. Because maybe you could go to a school that trains you to do something so you wouldn't have to work at McDonald's or whatever. <laughs> I know no one really wants to work at McDonald's. Sorry, McDonald's. Didn't mean to insult you. But, <laughs> anyway... That's my bit of advice, and sorry if I'm butting in too much, but, um, yeah, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye.